Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah ve ahdehu la şerike lah. Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve rasuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ecma'in. Allahümme la ilm lana illa ma alamtana. Allahümme allamna ma yenfa'na ve zidna ilmin ve tevfiqin. Eyvel Muhibbin. I thought it would be useful as so many people ask about uh, seeking knowledge and the path to seeking knowledge and advice for the Talib al ilm to <clears throat> offer some brief advice, especially for those in the universities and those who are just seeking knowledge in general, wherever they may be in their uh, journey in seeking knowledge. And this comes from our Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Razak. <clears throat> Uh, Al Badr, the son of Sheikh Abdul Masin Al Abad, Hafidhullahu Taala. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala preserve both of them. And so we're going to be very brief, and we're not going to go through his whole uh, short uh, kalima, but we're just going to take the important points that he mentioned, Hafidhullahu Taala. And the first piece of advice that he gave with regards to those who want to seek knowledge, he said, Wa aham. ما في هذا الباب أن يعلم الطالب العلم أن الطالب العلم إبادة وقرب لله سبحانه وتعالى. So the first thing he mentioned is that it's imperative for the student of knowledge and those seeking knowledge to know that seeking knowledge is worship and it is قربة. <coughs> it's seeking to draw nearer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. That's the first important imperative piece of advice that we've got to emphasize. And he mentions, along with that, he mentions that Allah Taala says, And they weren't commanded except to worship Allah alone sincerely. And for him is the religion. That ikhlas, because if it's an act of qurba, if it's an act of ibadah, it has to be done for who? And it has to be done to worship who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are so many ayat and so many ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. For example, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated on his Lord in the hadith of Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana aghna shuraka an shirk man amela. Amalan ashrak ma'i ghayri taraktuhu wa shirkuhu. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that Allah the Almighty said that I am the most self-sufficient, not in need of, of shirk, not in need of polytheism. Allah doesn't need that you associate partners with him. He doesn't need a partner, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and whoever does an action and commits shirk with me, meaning associates a partner with me, I've left him and his action. So that shows us the importance of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the first, first piece of advice. In another hadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa salam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, إن الأول الناس يقضى عليه يوم القيامة رجل نستشهد فأتي به فعرفه النعمه فعرفها فقال فما عملت فيها قال قتلت فيك حتى استشهد قال كذاب ولكنك فعلت لي قال هو جري فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب الوجه حتى ألك في النار the Prophet وسلم, mentioned three people. He said, from the first people who will be judged on the day of judgment is a man who was uh, martyred. And he will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked, what, what have you done? فيها, what have you done? And he says, I fought for you until I was martyred. And Allah will say, Kadabd, you lie, but rather you did it so that the people would say, that you were brave. And, and it was said. And then he was dragged in the fire. And then the second person is the man who memorized and, and taught the Quran. 
تعلمت العلم وعلمته and I taught it he, he, and, and he, he taught knowledge he sought knowledge and he taught it and he will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask فَمَا عَمَلْتَ فِيهَا then he says تعلمت العلم وعلمته I sought knowledge and I, and I taught it and then it was that the people they praised him and he and they referred to him as an alim or a qari, you know, someone who was who was a, a great reciter of the Quran and someone who was an alim. They had so much knowledge. And Allah will say to this person, Kadabd. So it was said about you. You know, you did this for these reasons. It was said about you. You got that. You got your reward in this dunya of being called an alim, of being called a great reciter of the Quran. You, you got that. Yeah, you got your little, your little chance of fame and your little bit of rewards in the dunya of what, whatever you were seeking. You got that. Then he will be dragged in the hellfire by his face, uh, uh, you know, until he's thrown in the fire. And then the third one is the one who spent. The point being, Ahabatifillah is sincerity to Allah. So the Shaykh mentioned that that is the first thing, uh, the first advice for the Talib al Ilm. The second piece of advice the Shaykh mentioned, he said, ومن وصايا العظيمة التي ينبغي لطالب العلم بل كل مسلم أن يعتني بها تحقيق تقوى التي هي وصية وصية الله جل وعلا للأولين والآخرين. He said in the second piece of advice is taqwa is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab, fi kitab al-kareem, وَلَقَدْ وَسَيْنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, and we have uh, ordered or advised those who were given the book from before you and you, وَإِيَّاكُمْ and it took Allah, and uh, to fear Allah. So, what does fear Allah mean? It means adhering to the commandments of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and it means avoiding His prohibitions, as as the ulama mentioned. And some of the tabi'een from our Salaf as Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, used to say, "Taqwa Allah, amalun bi ta'atillah, ala nuri min Allah." Rajain Tawabillah Wa Tarkun Li Maasiatillah Ala Nuri Minillah Khaifatin Adabillah A beautiful narration of our Salaf as Salih. <clears throat> Some of the Tabi'een used to say, meaning they were the followers of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, that Taqullah, fearing Allah, it is actions or it is acting upon obedience to Allah based upon light from Allah, seeking the reward from Allah and leaving off ma'asiyatillah, the sins of Allah based on the nur from Allah, fearing the punishment of Allah. So that shows us, Sahabat Tifillah, the importance of Taqwa, that that's going to help you in your talib al-ilm. If you want to come closer to Allah, qurba, you know, you're doing your seeking knowledge, seeking to draw nearer to Allah. Don't forget that. You're going to forget. You're going to get distracted. That's, that's human. Don't worry about being human. You're human. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'ayna tawabun. All the children of Adam make sins, but the best of those sinners are those who make repent, who repent. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're all going to forget. Sometimes the shaitan's going to whisper, MashaAllah, you're giving a nice lecture. MashaAllah, the people are praising you. MashaAllah, you're, you're doing this and you're doing that. But come back to Allah. Yes.
Come back to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reaffirm your intention. That's for the ikhlas. And the second piece of advice is to have taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means adhering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments. Or adhering to what? The book of Allah and the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The third piece of advice the shaykh gave, he said, وَمِنْ وَسَائِلِ طَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ and يَحْرِسَ al adab al-talib. He said, and from the advices to the student of knowledge, or from the advice to a student of knowledge, is that the person adheres to the manners of a talib. That some of the Salaf, they used to seek manners and learn manners and adab before they sought knowledge. And I want to advise the new students of knowledge. Start right. Start learning, you know, practicing good adab. Go to Riyadh al-Salihin. Go to Balugh al-Maram, the chapter of, uh, of mannerisms. Read those and practice. Riyadh al-Salihin. Practice. Read those books and just try to inculcate those mannerisms, which are prophetic mannerisms, which are the mannerisms of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which are the mannerisms of the Salaf al Saleh, which means they're the mannerisms of the Salafiyun, the Salaf. And the Salafis in contemporary times, those who are truly adhering to the Book of Allah and truly adhering to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and it truly ad ad adhering to the minhaj of the Salaf al salih they're working on their manners. They're not the worst and the most beast-like creatures with their manners. Those are the ones who, who can smile at you. Those are the ones who give you salam. Those are the ones who have... Uh, an opt optimistic outlook when it comes to you as your Muslim brothers. Those are the ones who are not suspicious of you. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْكُلُ فِي مِيزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنُ وَخُلْقُ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ الْفَاهِشَ الْبِدِي The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners and good conduct. And verily Allah hates wicked actions and sinful speech. From the advices, and this will help you in your talib al-ilm, believe it or not. And that is one of the reasons why, just one of the many reasons why we seek knowledge from the ulama. Because when you sit with the ulama, and I'm telling you, and especially those major scholars, especially those major scholars, so I'm talking to all of the scholars, but especially those big scholars, the major scholars, like I can just say myself, I've never seen a man like in my lifetime that influenced me. Uh... Meaning that I knew I, I met them and sat with them at least limit in a limited time. Sir. Then Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi. I didn't get a chance to see Ibn Uthameen. I never saw Ben Baz. I mean, meeting them or anything like this, or you know, many other scholars on that level. I've met Sheikh Fozan, uh, you know, Imam Fozan, and others, uh, many other ulama. Some of them to great stature like this, and some less than that. But Imam Muqbil, what I saw, is what I just saw, a sense, uh, you know, what I can only judge, and Allah is the best of judges and knows his heart, but what was really sincerity and humbleness and uh, severe love for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and detesting his bia, testing forming into groups and sects and breaking up. But he wanted people to unite on kitab Allah wa sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And that's from also adab, how you treat people. Another advice the Shaykh mentions, he said, وَمِنْ وَسَائِلْ لِطَالِبِ الْعَلْمِ يَحْرَسْ عَلَىٰ أَدَبْ الطَالِبِ So we mentioned the, to have the manners of the student. And then he said, وَمِنْ وَسَائِلْ لِطَالِبِ الْعَلْمِ أَنْ لَا يَغْفُ دُوَامٍ فِي طَالِبِ الْعَلْمِ أَنْ دُعَىٰ فَإِنُّهُ مِفْتَاقُ الْخَيْرِ He said that, that, that from the advice of seeking knowledge, that a student of knowledge should never be ignorant about and never close the door to, and that is making supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your to your 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 seeking knowledge is a type of ibadah. And at the same time increase your other acts of ibadah. 
That's your talab al-ilm. That's going to draw you nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Supplicate to Allah to give you tawfiq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم أدعوني أستجيب لكم Supplicate to me and I will give to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتاب الكريم وإذا سألت عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إلى الداعان so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to you, and he hears you, and he answers your prayers. So the talib al-ilm, who's on the talib al-khair, talib al-sunnah, talib al-jannah, as the Salaf used to say, talib al-ilm, talib al-jannah, seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. That this person is close to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to this person, loves this person. مَنْ يُرِدَ اللَّهُ بِخَيْرًا يَفَقُوا فِي الدِّينَ كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Whoever Allah wants good for him, He gives him knowledge of the religion, gives him fiqh, He gives him understanding of the deen. Subhanallah. Unders fiqh fi deen. هَذَا النَّعْمَ مِنْ نِعْمِ اللَّهِ To understand something of your religion, هَذَا النَّعْمَ مِنْ نِعْمِ اللَّهِ No one can take that from you. No one can take that from you. To have that and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with fiqh fi deen. So that's why I advise you to be stern on that path. That's a beautiful path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al nafi rizqan tayyib wa amal al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer our prayers and bring us closer to him and bless us on the path of knowledge and the path of khair. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. From the Wasaya, and we'll try to be brief. This is definitely worth translating if someone has the time. He said also is that, that a person does this when they're young, that this is a time of barakah. So in youth, it's much easier. When you get older, you have more responsibilities. Uh, you know, the person who has uh, many children or has more than one family, meaning these multiple wives and more children, this is much more difficult. But doesn't mean that they can't do it. They can still do it. And you can still start seeking knowledge. I don't care if you're 50, 60, 70, you can still start. You can still draw nearer to Allah. You can still do all of these things. It's just much more difficult. Much more difficult on your body. Much more difficult in your time. So there's barakah in youth. And from the advice to the talib al-ilm and yajtanab al-fitn. Stay away from fitna. And we've talked about this many times. The shaykh brings, and he brings evidence from the book of Allah and from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we're gonna, we, we need to bring this, uh, you know, wrap this up. And so, stay away from getting kathra taqil wa qal. Don't waste your time. You don't have time for it. You don't have time to know who's on it, who's off it, who to sit with, who not to. You need to know some of those things. But to immerse yourself and just get involved, don't, if you get the chance to go sit with the ulama, you need to be under those beards, taking notes and getting, getting that, getting it. Don't waste time and, you know, you, you need to have other gatherings, additional gatherings and men hats from someone who doesn't even know Arabic. What is this? What kind of sunnah is this? What kind of talib al-ilm is this? Get with the program. If you got the opportunity to study in Jamal Islamiyah, if you got this opportunity to study in a Marcus or sunnah somewhere, if you got to study wherever you're studying, be serious and stay away from the fitna. Don't even waste your time. Because that's what it does. It's waste your time and it wrecks your heart. And from the advice the Sheikh mentioned, he said, is to conserve your time. Because many people waste their time. So don't be playing PlayStation all night and doing all those other things and watching movies and whatever when you're trying to seek knowledge. You're trying to atul bil am coming closer to Allah. This is a, a, a na'ma. How many people would love to be in your position and they're not blessed like that? But you are. So use your time wisely. And those are just some of the advice or those are the advice that the Shaykh gave and he gave a lot of evidence and a lot of beautiful Kalimat as he always does. And min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah bless us with ilm al nafi rizqan tayyib wa amal al And put it on our scale of good deeds. And of course on the shaykh's scale of good deeds. Anything that was said correctly was from Allah azawajal. Anything that was incorrect was from myself and the shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.